I'm here to talk to you about a simple idea. This idea is about how to become a billionaire. So you might have a few ideas in your mind right now. Whatever is in there, I'd like you to just take a moment and let go of them, because I promise you that what I'm going to be talking about has nothing to do with the concept of billionaire as you know it today. Although it is really rewarding. So let's discover what this is. The current equation of success around the world, based on, let's say, our media, the majority of the stories that we see, is this. Money makes the world go round. Well, I'm not so sure that's true. We essentially equate our success in life, or our professional success, on our financial capacity, right? On what we're able to achieve. The problem with this is that, well, the arms trade, for example, right? This is a really easy example. The arms trade makes roughly 40 to 60 billion dollars annually. That's a really lucrative business, and who, for anyone who's a part of that, they're doing pretty well based on our current model. The problem is, you know, these guns have lots of negative externalities, right? They don't exactly create life, and they definitely don't create happiness, at least not for most of us. So, what does this mean? How are we doing? If I was in grade school, my teacher would give me an F based on our score. And I think that we can do a lot better. We have so many huge challenges around the world, from poverty to extremism to resource competition and availability to massive inequities. Life is, is not perfect, for sure, but we can certainly do better than this. We only have one planet, after all. So how do we do that? What I'm suggesting is that we take a massive step back and completely rewire the global brain. Have a massive shift in global consciousness and decide that we want a new equation, because what we have today isn't really working. So what's holding us back? If we wanted to make a better world, and I think that we all do, why aren't we getting there? Well, there's this little thing that sometimes scares people. It's called fear. That's what fear does. Well, I say that we actually embrace fear, because fear could be the one thing that we actually need to succeed. We need to be fearless. Right? Fear is the direction you want to go in if you want to become the person you have the potential to be. It's a great compass. So, how do we get there? And what is, what is the thing about fear, right, that we actually fear? It's accountability. And what is accountability? Accountability is something that we, we look to when we actually want to achieve something. There are two people that I really respect, had great ideas. One of them was Mahatma Gandhi, and the other one was Peter Drucker. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Drucker said, what gets measured gets done. So if we can actually have a Gandhi-Drucker mashup, we get something like this. Measure the change you want to see in the world. So how do we do that? How do we actually measure the quantifiable good that each of us does in life? I call it the life force number, which is really simple. It's, it's an imperfect measurement, but it basically gives us a way to track how we're doing with the one thing that is the most important part of life, and that is contributing. So I'm going to tell you about a few people who are really happy people. They're happy, but they are also really successful. They're successful not because of what they make financially, but because of the meaning that they're able to find in life. So a couple of years ago, I went to Senegal, and I met this man. His name is El Haj Diop. El Haj is holding a photograph of his daughter, Amy. Amy was eight years old when she was killed 
by a horrible, horrible murderer. This murderer actually kills one child every minute. Who's the murderer? A mosquito. So, El Hajj could have been paralyzed by this experience, but it actually propelled him into action. He decided that he wanted something totally different. He stood up in what otherwise would have been a current in a river going downstream, and he said, "No more." He basically declared that he would create a malaria-free community, death-free. So, how did he do that? Well, he studied like hell. He learned how to use different interventions, and he succeeded. He worked really hard at it. He became really happy. He was one man who helped one village, and then an interesting thing happened: more people started to come to him for help. Sixty villages came to him for help. That was about 50,000 people. 50,000 people he stopped from dying. That's pretty cool. But what he did is create a model. That actually inspired his whole country. So all of Senegal was learning from this man. So if you tally this up, his life force number, the positive effect that he's had on the world to date from his courage, is over 13 million people. Didn't really cost him much money, but that's pretty successful if you ask me. Let's go to another story. So. If any of you were sitting around in 2005, you remember Hurricane Katrina. There was a little girl who, like many of us, particularly in the states, were watching television at that time, and we were watching images like this. Right, Hurricane Katrina ripped through New Orleans. It was devastating. But this 10-year-old girl who was sitting in her parents' living room was not like your ordinary 10-year-old. She wanted to do something, and she did. She got outside. She started visiting her neighbors, knocking on doors, started asking for support to help out. And the local news person picked it up, got on national TV, and other kids started learning about what she was doing, and they started calling her, saying, "What can we do? How can we get involved? We want to be a part of this action." So she got pretty busy. Her name was Talia Lehman, and Talia started to give back. She started to make a difference to people in New Orleans. Even though that state was miles away from her home, she proved that anyone, even a 10-year-old girl, can make a huge difference. So, what is the difference that she made? As one girl with one city, she mobilized 12 million kids to go out and, and do stuff. They all got really busy together. They raised over 10 million dollars. That's Equal to the top five corporate donors of Hurricane Katrina relief, that's pretty awesome. She's now worked over in, in four continents, in 20 countries. So, at the most conservative estimate, I put her score, her life force number, at over 25 million. She makes me feel pretty lazy, but you know. The next story is also kind of interesting. It's, it's, it's an unusual one. It's a geneticist. He wanted to find a cure for a, a massive human pandemic. Not an easy task. The pandemic that he wanted to treat was hunger.、Um, in America, it's a, it's a pretty big problem. It's a problem worldwide. So how do you cure hunger? For him, it's all about rock and roll.、It、doesn't seem like the most obvious solution. Certainly not something you might find in a laboratory.、Um, but Sid. Uh, who's an old friend of mine, loves rock music and he loved going to concerts. So he started going backstage, and he discovered that backstage there's all this awesome food. The best bands have the best music, and the best music always has the best food.、Um, but they also waste that food. Around 10% of、um, food that's in concessions or anything catered ends up in the garbage. Sid thought that was kind of problematic, so he asked Aerosmith if he could have their food one night. He fed 150 people. He went back the next week. He did that for an entire summer. He enlisted over 250 bands. <coughs> then he went to sports teams, and then he went to universities and schools, and so on. Started collecting food all over the United States. I met him, and he was feeding 
tens of millions of people, sorry, not tens of millions, um, tens of thousands of people. We decided that what we would do is take his idea to the federal government. And we took five people, we worked on this piece of legislation together, it was about two pages long. We sent that to Congress, it passed, that was called the Federal Food Donation Act. And that bill helped scale what his idea was. And Sid, last uh, December, fed his one billionth meal to someone. His life force number is around 50 million, maybe, but it's probably a lot bigger than that. I'm being really conservative with the estimate. But a billion meals, one idea, he's kicking ass. My last story is actually about a little boy who in 1922 was sailing across the ocean to America to find opportunity. He didn't have anything except the clothes on his back and a small toy horse. So when he got to the States, he and his mother moved in with this man who his, became his stepfather, who wanted him to work at a menial job. So he said, you're done with school, no more school. So at 14, he ran away from home. A school teacher took him in and said, come live with me. This is in the middle of the Great Depression. She gave him clothes, she gave him an education, and she taught him the importance of kindness. What happened to this little boy? Well, interesting thing. He went on to build over 200 successful businesses over the course of his life. Afterwards, he became a pretty significant philanthropist, contributing to advancements in sepsis, cancer, diabetes. He funded large institutions of education like Columbia University, um, the Library of Congress made a big difference because of this woman. He also was named the richest man in America in the 1980s. Successful based on the old model, but also the new one. That guy was also my dad. That kid in that little outfit that looks ridiculous is me uh, and my mom. So at the end of my dad's life, I asked him a question. I said, who of all the people you've met in your long life has been the most successful? He looked to me, thought for a minute, he said, Mrs. Durat. So who's Mrs. Durat? She is a school teacher that took in a schoolboy who was a runaway and spent his life working so that he could give back for her. So the, the, the person that made the difference here is not actually my dad, but it's Mrs. Durat. She is the true billionaire here. Contribution clearly reaps rewards for people. And with all contribution, it, you know, Getting to a billion, it takes a lot of work and teamwork and courage. But it always starts with one. One idea, one person. But anyone can do it. Through the power of connectivity and the power of ideas, we're able to scale like crazy, just like these other four people. So I think that the world needs heroes today with the size of the problems that we're facing. I would like to invite you to help me create a different equation in life. And maybe some of us will get to become billionaires like Mrs. Durat. Thank you. <laughs>